So I'm just going to go ahead and extract the distribution that we've just downloaded. Okay, so we can see now we have a Magento directory. It's always best to try and keep Magento in its own directory if you can. Uh, this makes administration much, much easier. And you can always use the Apache rewrite rules to make the pretty URL links. Uh, so it makes it look like you've installed Magento in your base directory or in a subdomain or anywhere that you like. Now if you watch my screencasts on creating the database and the database user, you'll have heard me mention security through obfuscation time and time again. Now according to the Magento website, there's over 30,000 Magento installations out. Uh, so I bet most of them have actually installed Magento in the default directory. Now for security reasons, you should definitely not go with the defaults as it makes life so much easier for any hackers attempting to get into your website and particularly get at your customer data. So for this reason, I'm going to obfuscate the installation directory, just like I did with the database and our username. So for this demonstration, I'm going to rename my Magento directory to scw underscore Magento. There we go. Now that we've successfully extracted and renamed the distribution, we need to change the ownership to our web server and we need to modify the permission of a few key folders. This is all covered in the installation guide. Uh, if you forget this step, however, the installation wizard will prompt you as it does the initial checks. So let's change the ownership to my web server. You won't need to do that step if you're installing on a web server that's either shared or VPS. If you're on a dedicated host, you may need to do that. So next, I'm going to change the permissions for the app etc directory, the var and the media directory. So if you're not familiar with Unix-based platforms, the etc directory is typically where we store configuration files. As these are created and modified by the installation wizard, uh, this directory must be writable, uh, otherwise the installation will fail. The var directory is where we store transient data, so things like downloading updates from Magento, uh, installing them, uh, the product and catalog caches, and a few other bits and pieces as well. The media directory is where you'll be storing all your product photos, product downloads and product related media. Now if you read the official Magento guide, they get you to change the permissions to 755 and or 777. Uh, please don't do this as it is a security risk, especially if you use your web server on the internet. In fact, a lot of web hosting providers will warn you about opening permissions to this extent and you may find that Magento errors with error 500 if you do this. If you're not familiar with how Unix handles ownership and permissions, I'd recommend just doing a bit of Googling on the subject just so you get familiar with the concept. So now that we've done this, we're actually ready to go ahead and start installing and configuring Magento. So if I switch back to my web browser, we're already on the tab for our uh, SCW computer system site. So if I tag onto the end of this URL, SCW underscore Magento, and hit return, and we get the starting page for the Magento installation wizard. As we're using the full distribution of Magento, we actually skip the download phase of the installation. Here we have the open software license, RSL version 3. So it's a good idea to read through this as you'll be needing to agree to the terms and conditions. So once you have read those, tick I agree. And this enables the continue button, which we'll go ahead and tick. Okay, next up we have localization. So this is where you set all your country options, uh, so your locale, your time zone, and your default currency. Uh, now by default it's all set up for America. 
as I'm based in the UK I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, United Kingdom from this list but as we can see here Magento supports a huge range of uh, countries so go ahead and select uh, the appropriate one for your installation now on the time zone I'm going to select GMT and my default currency will be British pound sterling there we go so once you've done that you can hit the continue button now here we have the configuration page so the first section is dedicated to our database connection uh, we have local host pre-populated for us for the database host uh, this is going to be adequate for almost all installations unless your database and web server are different physical systems uh, we have the database name which is pre-populated with Magento as we didn't go with the defaults I need to change that to my database name Uh, the username is the Magento user that we created when doing the database. Uh, by default it's set up for root, that's a pretty big security hole and not really what we want. So my database user is MagDBUser99. I'm going to go ahead and change this. And my database user password, which is this big long password here. Tables prefix is actually optional. If you're installing Magento or multiple installations of Magento in the same database, then you can prefix the tables so you know which table goes with which installation. Purely from an administration point of view, it's not great to have multiple installations of any program in using the same database. Uh, Magento really should have its own database per instance. And given that Magento does support multiple websites and multiple storefronts from a single installation, it's unlikely you'll actually need this uh, feature. So I'm going to leave that as blank because I don't want to prefix my tables. So scrolling down we have uh, web access options and the base URL is already pre-populated for us and that's really just taken from this bit up in the URL bar. So leave that as it is. Uh, the admin path. Now this is the bit that is tagged onto the end of this base URL for accessing the administration area. Now by default it's set up for admin uh, which again is great and descriptive but because it's default uh, it's it's not great for security. So you can rename this either now or after you've gone through this phase so I'm going to go ahead and just change it now while I have the opportunity. I'll just do scw-admin. Again you can be more creative in your obfuscation So this next option here about skipping base URL validation is only really valid if this base URL isn't pre-populated. So I'm going to leave that unchecked. The use web server or Apache rewrite rules. Uh, this allows you to overwrite some of the default URLs and make some of the longer URLs pretty. So if you have Magento installed in a subdirectory like we have here, but you want the installation to appear as the base URL, uh, you can tick this and modify the rewrites so that you drop the SCW underscore Magento, for example. So I'm going to go ahead and enable URL rewrites. Next up, we have uh, an option to use secure URLs or SSL. If, if you've purchased an SSL certificate and you've installed it and confirmed that it's successfully enabled, then you can go ahead and tick this box and it will enable SSL or HTTPS URLs for your login and admin area. If you haven't purchased an SSL or you haven't configured it yet, then don't tick this. If you tick this and you haven't got an SSL enabled, you'll be locked out of your admin area. So it's not absolutely key that you enable it here. In fact, I'd probably recommend that you leave it off for now and enable it later once you've confirmed that Magento has actually been installed correctly. Now scrolling down again we have the session storage options and here we have two options. We can either choose to store our visitor and customer sessions either on the file system or in the database. Really the choice comes down to how many visitors you're expecting to your website. If you're not expecting too many to begin with, uh, probably go with the file system option. If you've got thousands or tens of thousands of visitors, potentially a database would give you better performance. So for this demonstration I'm going to go with the default and select file system. 
and I'm going to hit continue now.